Hey there, so last time we talked about Christmas movies that might not be on everybody's list. This time let's talk about TV shows, TV episodes, TV specials that have a Christmas theme that you might not have heard of as often as Charlie Brown Christmas or Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer or those more popular canonical Christmas uh, specials. The first one I want to talk about is The Blue Carbuncle, the Sherlock Holmes story by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, which has been adapted from the original short story into television and radio dramas multiple times. My personal favorite is probably from the Jeremy Brett Granada TV series starring Jeremy Brett as uh, Sherlock Holmes and David Burke as Dr. Watson. It's just a splendid adaptation of this really, really great Christmas story. One of my very favorite Christmas stories from anywhere in any medium and the Granada TV series adaptation with Jeremy Brett as uh, Sherlock Holmes is just excellent. There's a beautiful moment toward the end of it after Holmes has resolved the case and the perpetrator has has left where uh, Watson kind of gives Holmes a hard time for being soft on the thief that they caught, for letting him go because it's Christmas, and Jeremy Brett explodes really briefly on Watson, that, that way he had when he played Holmes of playing him in a very tightly wound way where he would just sort of go off on people for an instant and then wind himself right back, where he, he turns on Watson uh, in a really defensive, self-justifying way and tells him that it's not his job, he's not the police. Uh, he can let that guy go if he wants, and maybe he's maybe he's putting him on the right path by forgiving him of his crime this one time and letting him go. And it's a really nice moment and a really, really nice story and a really great Christmas story. And a really good compliment to, uh, you know, if you like 19th century Christmas stories like uh, Dickens' uh, Christmas Carol, it's a really wonderful compliment to that, to have homes set in Victorian England uh, going through this, solving this mystery. Uh, during the Christmas holiday. It's a really, really nice uh, episode. Next on the list, He-Man and She-Ra, a Christmas special. The twin brother and sister heroes of He-Man and She-Ra, Prince Adam and Princess Adora, join forces to celebrate Christmas on planet Eternia and to face the combined threats of their arch enemies Skeletor and Hordak. I was such a He-Man fan when I was a kid, and the He-Man Christmas special, which was an hour long and aired during prime time, was just a huge event for me. And of course, to see Skeletor and Hordak team up, and to see He-Man and She-Ra team up, and all the characters from the various, from the two shows come together. And the justification for having them celebrate Christmas on this alien planet was great too, because they said, well, Prince Adam's mother, Queen Marlena, is from Earth, so they celebrate Christmas for her sake because she likes Christmas and she remembers it. And just a you know a, a, a clever little justification for having them celebrate Christmas on He-Man. Uh, just a oh such a, a a nostalgic experience to watch this show, which I have on DVD, of course, and I watch every year around Christmas. And uh, Skeletor is just amazing in this episode is so funny as Skeletor, the way he, he, he ends up having to sort of chaperone these two children uh, who are lost and just kind of guide them through this snowy waste and the further they go the more the Christmas spirit sort of overtakes Skeletor and his evil leaves him and he becomes good for a moment and, but, and what's so funny is he's aware of it and he doesn't like it. He can feel himself becoming good and, and his evil sort of ebbing away and he doesn't like it. He wants to be evil, but Christmas is not allowing him to be evil. It's so funny. Uh, one of my favorite things. Next on the list, the two Christmas episodes produced by Mystery Science Theater 3000. First, there's Santa Claus Conquers the Martians, starring Joel, and then a few years later they made another Christmas episode featuring Mike called Santa Claus. And both of them are absolutely hysterical. Two of the best episodes of the series, Santa Claus Conquers the Martian, this crazy, weird movie about uh, an, an invasion force from Mars coming to Earth and kidnapping Santa Claus to take him back to Mars because the children of Mars don't know how to play and they figure if Santa can bring them toys and start Christmas up on Mars that the children of Mars will be happier. It's, it's just a mindfuck of a movie, just a weird movie and an attempt at like a weird sort of sci-fi comedy that isn't funny, at least not in the way it intends to be. 
uh, but a really funny episode of Mystery Science Theater 3000, and some of the host segments on this episode are great, uh, like uh, the Christmas Carol that they sing that is written by Crow, and in real life was actually written by Mike Nelson, the head writer, and uh, about uh, Patrick Swayze movies, a Patrick Swayze Christmas. Let's have a Patrick Swayze Christmas this year. It's just, oh, how can you get any better than that? And then uh, the Santa Claus episode from a few years later when Mike was the host. Uh, another really warped, weird Christmas movie. This uh, Mexican adaptation of the Santa story where Santa is not so much concerned with delivering presents as he is with fighting this evil minion of Satan, this little devil called Pitch, who uh, appears in the lives of children and, and, and uh, forces them or, or compels them to be naughty. And... Uh, uh, <laughs> The, 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 the shot from the movie that is always remembered and always made fun of is for some reason they decided in this movie to give Santa mechanical reindeer and there's a really creepy close-up of one of the reindeer laughing or singing or doing something it's basically this white plastic reindeer with big fucking bug eyes and his jaw on a hinge just kind of going like that and it's so freaky and they have a lot of fun with that Mike and the bots making fun of that making fun of the movie in general two classic Mystery Science Theater episodes. No Christmas of mine would be complete without watching those. Next up is the best Christmas episode ever produced by my favorite show ever, All in the Family, and the episode is titled The Draft Dodger. It's the story of an old friend of Meatheads, Mike's, who comes to visit for Christmas from Canada, where he has been hiding out from the government after avoiding the draft during the Vietnam War. All in the Family produced several Christmas episodes during its very long run, but The Draft Dodger is definitely my favorite. I love the episode. It's a beautiful balance, as All in the Family was very good at, of drama and comedy. And uh, it's a skill that both the writers and that Carol O'Connor as Archie Bunker had, uh, sharper than most people who have worked in television. There's uh, of course, when Archie finds out that David, Mike's friend, is a draft dodger, he completely loses it. He flips out. He tells everybody that, that he's not going to eat any food until until David leaves. And, you know, what if the FBI comes uh, and just totally goes into full, full bore, crazy, conservative, ultra-patriotic Archie mode? Uh, made even worse, amplified by the presence of Pinky Peterson, his good friend, whose son is revealed to have died in the Vietnam War. Uh, and is having Christmas alone with Archie's family because his, his son has died. And uh, there's a great moment where Archie just sort of explodes, it all comes out of him, and he has this really emotional exchange with Mike where he says he doesn't want to talk about the Vietnam War anymore, he doesn't want to talk about that rotten goddamn war anymore. And keep in mind, this is in the 70s when the Vietnam War was freshly over, was just still very loud, very, very large in the minds of people. And Archie says that in this really serious, deeply emotional exchange. And then, right after that, they turn right into a joke where he says, do you think that the whole people in this country should be able to decide whether or not they want to go to war? You couldn't get a decent war off the ground that way. And it's such a bold choice to go from this raw, naked, emotional moment to a joke, and a really dark, funny joke, too. Uh, just a splendid episode, a splendid Christmas episode of a splendid show. And last on the list, but certainly not least, what might be my favorite Christmas-related bit of television, The Office Christmas Specials, where the BBC documentary crew returns to the workplace at Wernham Hogg to catch up on what the employees at the office have been doing since the end of their second series. It's the end of The Office, the original BBC version of The Office, which is my one of my favorite television shows ever. Uh, the show that introduced Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant to the world as comic geniuses. And uh, it resolves a lot of threads that had been left hanging from the show. Uh, it resolves the Tim and Dawn romance. And it sort of starts the character of David Brent on uh, a, a path towards some sort of redemption, finally. And it does all of this without ever betraying its ideals, without ever becoming something that it never was, staying true to itself and true to its comic voice. And as the other comedy shows that I've mentioned, uh, 
in this video, it, it, it mixes both the, the, the real, true, sentimental feeling about Christmas and some really, really compelling dramatic elements uh, with just uproarious comedy. It is so goddamn funny. And it's always wonderful to, to be able to watch something during Christmas that is a Christmas-themed show that uh, can touch you and move you, but can also make you laugh. There's nothing more wonderful than sitting around during the holidays with your friends or your family and watching a Christmas-themed show that will remind you of the holiday and put you in the Christmas spirit and will just make you laugh so hard it hurts. And uh, the Office Christmas specials are like that, and they are an incredibly satisfying conclusion to that nearly perfect series and a great, great thing to watch during Christmas. So those are some of my favorite Christmas-themed TV episodes that you might not hear about as often as the Rudolphs and the Charlie Browns. There's some honorable mentions I could bring up too. For instance, uh, Robot Chicken always has really funny Christmas specials. I especially like the one they did in 2010 that opened with uh, Santa Claus beating the Coca-Cola executive board to death with baseball bats for using his image without his permission, and then it ends with a, a sketch involving a race between Santa Claus and Superman to see who's the fastest. I love that. Um, there's also a, a, a Colbert Christmas, The Greatest Gift of All, Stephen Colbert's Christmas special, which is uh, a great Christmas special in its own right, and also a, a really clever, funny spoof of those kind of Christmas specials, like a cheesy, old-fashioned Christmas special. Really funny. And uh, a Christmas episode of The Twilight Zone I've always liked, called Changing of the Guard, starring Donald Pleasance as an aging teacher who is retiring after the Christmas holiday and questions whether or not his career was worth it uh, and is visited by ghosts of Christmas past, so to speak, that sort of remind him of, of his work, a really wonderful Christmas story. Uh, so that's it. Take something off the list or think of your own sort of not-so-common Christmas TV special and pour yourself a glass of eggnog and maybe splash a little extra rum in there when mom's not looking and watch yourself some quality Christmas TV this holiday season.